right, it's time for me to start painting this job. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to mix up the primer. Now this is oil-based enamel undercoat and uh, I'll be using an HVLP gun which is HVLP stands for high volume low pressure I always use that in my cabinet finishing uh, I'll be using a two quart paint pot which is hooked up directly to the gun so the first thing I have to do I have a a half a can of undercoat left from another job and I think it's still good so I've already mixed it and what I use to mix my finishes including my paints and everything else because a lot of the finishes that I use are volatile and you know you just don't want electricity in here and sparks so I use a die grinder pneumatic die grinder with a uh, one of those little uh, mixer things on it and it works quite well I don't want to get it on my camera but I mix it up and then the next thing I'm gonna have to do is thin the paint to a specific viscosity so that I can get a nice smooth clean finish to lay out now I've kept a log which I'll show you later but I have a log of every finish I've actually laid down in the last 40 years. It tells me what the viscosity of the finish is, it tells me how long it's taken me, it tells me everything. So I go back to that, I figure out how much material I'm going to need, I thin it to the viscosity using what's called a Zahn cup, which is actually, it's kind of relative and I'll show you what I mean but I get the viscosity correct, pour it in, I filter it through a screen so nothing clogs up, I put it in the paint pot and we get started spraying. So anyway, this is the, the mixer, just, I don't know, I think you can see it, I don't want the camera too close to the paint because it does splatter. <laughs> So I mix up the paint. I've already added some thinner to it. Now let me explain what a Zahn cup is. Uh, they, in the industry of viscosity for finishing and what have you, it's basically a cup that has a specific volume and it has a hole in the bottom. Again, of a specific size and they make Zahn cups in different sizes. I've always used this which is equivalent to a number two so you dip this in the paint or the finish you hold it up and you start timing the seconds that it takes for the stream of paint to come out here to begin to break up into droplets and at that point it tells you now my finish is using this particular undercoat I'm shooting for something between 33 and 37, 38 seconds. So I'm going to continue testing, adding solvent or paint thinner in this case, and checking it with the Zahn cup until I hit that target. And then I'll know that the viscosity is correct for this particular equipment to lay down a good, even, float out finish on the work that I'm, I'm finishing. So let me go test it and see what happens. All right, so I take the cup, I put it into the liquid, into the paint finish, and when I pick it up, I start counting. I count to myself. I'm looking for something like, I think I said 33, 37, something like that. Okay. Six, 
10. Sixteen. Twenty one. Thirty. Seven. Thirty seven. When the stream broke, it was 37 seconds. That's in my target. So I know that the viscosity is right for the equipment that I'm using by my experience. So now I'm going to filter this into another can, and then I'm going to fill the pot, and we're going to start spraying. I'm using HVLP equipment, I think I said that. Now you can buy empty paint cans from your, you know, from a paint supplier like, you know, Benjamin Moore or whatever. I don't know that the big box stores sell them, but they, they, I know Benjamin Moore sells them. They're not cheap, but you can use a coffee can, you can use whatever you've got, but I like to buy the cans so that I can keep the product when I'm finished with it. So we're going to take a filter, you can buy these filters also at uh, your paint store. Put it in, put it over the top, just like that. Now I'm going to pour it in. The last thing you want is for some clump of paint to clog up your spray system while you're working. Just a big mess to clean it up. That one looks pretty good in there. Alright, so Now if I need to mix more of this, I can still use this filter if I'm still working in the same day. If the filter dries out, it's no good anymore. So I have about oh, a little more than three quarters of a gallon. So what I do is I put it over the old can, take the cover, the filter from drying out. Okay. Now we're going to load our pound. Put two gallons in, well, two quarts rather. Leave a little air space at the top. Hmm. Where did I put it? Oh, here it is. Okay. Keep that covered. First thing I'm going to want to do is bleed the gun. If you start spraying right away on your work, it's going to spatter. So, and that's not what you want. So, you bleed the gun so that the paint fills the the paint line. 
okay. I need my air supply pressure on the pot. I'm going to lower my air supply back to 35 psi. Now this also has its own regulator on it and it should be set to around 5 psi which it is. 5 psi. Okay. So, this is the gun. And what I'm going to do is without putting any air to it, I'm going to pull the trigger until I get a steady stream of paint. I don't know if you can see this, but I'm, I'm doing it into a bucket. Okay. I now have paint filling the line. I'm going to take this, bring it out to my spray area. This is where I'll be doing the spraying. Behind me there is a exhaust fan to pull all the overspray out. And I'm going to spray a test piece first to make sure everything's right before I start spraying. Turn the exhaust fan on. Okay. I like that. It's a nice float out even coat of primer. So Thank mm -hmm. you. 